so this is a review of the uh, Beta and TV Light Radio version 2 for the FR Sky protocol. So in terms of what is good about this controller is that it's value for money. It's really really cheap and the reason why it's value for money is, is because it has hobby grey sticks and gimbals and it works on OpenTX. And you can skip model setup every time when you want to connect to better flight. And you can bind to different receiver. That means you can bind to different quads, and it goes into the memory, so you don't have to rebind every time. So it doesn't mean that this controller is for one quad only. And um, there is a lipo battery included, which is a good lipo battery, which you can charge inside the controller. Charging takes about 40 minutes to one hour and also it's very easy to control and it's, the binding is very easy to do also as it's very portable and it seems to be well built and very solid. You can make it better by adjusting the stick height and you can tighten the stick throttle stick because if you have a very loose throttle stick, it's very hard to control the throttle. So especially for beginner or entry level pilots, you need to do that. And the next thing that you need to do is to do a neck strap. Because it doesn't come with a neck strap, you need to make some modification as you can see on the screen now. The reason for the neck strap is that you don't need to hold the controller and you don't unnecessarily move the sticks around while you're holding the controller. And the next thing that you can do to make it better is you uh, set up throttle limit. Because you cannot set up the throttle limit on the controller itself, you set it up on pedal flight and then assign it to a switch on the controller. I need to give you a warning. If you don't know uh, about the settings of the controller, don't change the settings on the controller using the OpenTS companion. Just leave that alone because I have gone through that. The sticks are all very linear, so it's very basic, so there's no export or anything, so you don't need to change them. The bad things about this controller is that it's not really a very bad disadvantage, but the only thing is that the sticks are not full range as in the standard transmitter. So it's a bit finicky when you control your quad. I mean, you should have another two extra sticks. The reason being that normally you have the mod, you have the uh, beeper, you have the, the flip over mod, and you also need an activate switch, and, and also a switch for throttle limit, and extra switch for beeper. So they should have any uh, extra two switches to make it even better. The battery lasts only about one and a half hours, but that is only a small disadvantage. You can buy more batteries. Um, yeah, guys, that's it. That's um, the basic setup and what is good and bad about this controller. I have flown this using this controller with um, the Tiny Hop Race 2, which I have video coming up, and it's very easy to control. So if this is your first time coming into this hobby, this is a great controller to buy. And um, you can use this for your tiny whoop and things like that, very small quad, and it should last you a long time. Anyway guys, this is a great controller, value for money, and um, yeah, if you want it, just go out and buy this one. Anyway, uh, that's, the, that's the end of the review. And for the rest of the video, you're going to see how you set up the, uh, the neck strap and also tighten the sticks and also better flight throttle limit. So, hope you guys like and enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Just remember, quadcopter is not rocket science. See you next time. To turn on the controller, just press and hold, switch.
one, two, three. So this is in DA mode because I've changed that to DA mode. Press and go. Maybe switch it off. To connect to the computer, turn on the controller, connect USB. And this is for your trainer port. And I, I don't want I don't use it. So I don't know how to use it. So I'm not going to talk about this one. And to bind, what you need to do is just need to uh, turn this on. There you go, solid first. Then you press the bind button and hold it for a few seconds. And then you should start flashing. And let go. This is in binding mode. You only last for a few seconds, and that's it. Turn it off. To charge, you just connect the USB, micro USB cable to your usual 5 volt micro USB charger, and that's how you charge it. It takes around 45 minutes to 1 hour to have a full charge and it normally lasts around 1 and a half hours to 2 hours depending on how much you use it. Now it's in uh, E60 mode, the first flash. Now let's change it back to uh, V8. So you need to cycle through it. Now this is the um, second D60 mode. Turn it off. So basically, what you need to do is just hold the button button, turn it on, wait for the vibration, let go, and wait for the purple lights to be on. See if I change that to uh, D8. No, because this one, this one was uh, out of position. Just do that. Wait until it flashes. Okay, now this is in D8 mode. Off. So this one also gives you a warning if your throttle is up and if you turn it off, it will give you a red flash. So you need to put it on. So normally I fly with this uh, Tyrannis QX7 and the sticks are stiffer. I find that this is much uh, easier to control if you have stiffer stick because um, if you want precision, once you move the stick, the stick itself doesn't move too much and then you feel that you control your quad much better. So when I have the Beta FPV light radio 2, when it comes out of the box, the throttle is too soft for me, and especially because this uh, controller is small. So when you press your thumb 
and your fingers on the sticks. You tend to move it quite a lot, so which makes the quad becomes very erratic and uh, you cannot have precise control. So that's why I open up this Beta FPV light radio too to see if I can adjust the tension of the sticks. So the pitch and roll sticks here, you can't really adjust the tensions, but with the throttle sticks here, you can tighten these screws all the way down, and then you will make this throttle stick a bit stiffer. So I hope that this will help me better control the um, quad with this uh, small controller. So when you take this back uh, cover off, there are four screws each on each side of the uh, cover. So you have three screws at the bottom here on the grip and then you have two screws in the battery compartment so there are four screws all together and these are just weights so it makes the uh, controller a bit uh, heavier and um, this is how it looks and this is the electronics inside Those are the switches. So because there's no neck strap holder, it's better that you make a neck strap holder so that you take the weight off your hands and fingers and you don't like simply move the sticks around because of the tensions that you have of holding the controller on your hands. So what you can do is just strap two rubber bands and a zip tie here and then you can use it as a neck strap. And I find that with this neck strap, it's easier for me to control the uh, controller and control the sticks.